Welcome back everybody. Today we're making a new layout in the Big Shallow. I'm thinking to go for a relatively simple river style layout. So lots of boulders, some driftwood and just a few plants. Yeah, I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Let's get started. Yeah, so river style it is. I think there were a few occasions where I referred to the previous layout as a river style as well. I think that also kind of looked like a river, but it was very different to what we're going to make today. That layout was very dark, was very condensed and a little bit mysterious. This layout is going to be very different. It's going to be much more light. It's going to be much more open and with a lot more room for the fish to swim. And speaking of fish, all the fish that were in the previous layout will go back in here as well. So they're currently staying in this uh, little pond that I made. So this is like, a, I think it's like a 40 liter tub, something like that. They've been in here for two days and they're absolutely fine. And hopefully by the end of this day or maybe tomorrow they will go back in the big shallow. I'm sure some of you are thinking like how are you able to put the fish straight back in? I mean you're starting from scratch, doing a new setup, don't you have to cycle it again? Well the reason I'm able to do that is because I've kept the external filter basically running the entire time. Yeah, so inside the cabinet I have this massive stainless steel external canister filter. And this one is full of beneficial bacteria and I took down the previous layout a few days ago so there hasn't been water in the aquarium for a few days but I kept the inflow and outflow in this little bucket over here. So basically this massive filter is just filtering this tiny bucket, but that way we're able to keep the beneficial bacteria alive and we should be able to kind of instantly cycle this aquarium. So that's it, let's not waste any more time, let's get to work. Uh, first thing we have to do is the substrate. Oh wait, one more thing in case anybody's curious, the big shallow is measuring 120 centimeters from left to right, it's 30 centimeters tall and it's 50 centimeters front to back. So total volume is roughly 180 liters, but yeah, I mean, with all the hardscape and stuff, that's usually a little bit less. And the light that I'm using is the Skylight Hyper Spot. This is the L, the largest version. So this is a light manufactured in Poland. I've been using this one for well over a year now, and I absolutely love it. But yeah, let's get started with the substrate. Of course, we are going to use sand because it's a river style layout. But in the back, I want to kind of raise the substrate a little bit. So I'm going to go for a little bit of aquasol and some gravel as well. Okay, so I got some leftover Neosol. This is basically what I use all the time. It's probably my favorite brand and just contains a lot of nutrients. Normally I would just pour it directly in the tank like that. But because we're going to be using lots of sand and gravel, I basically don't want those things to start mixing with each other. So I'm going to fill up a few of these mesh bags with the Neosol. That way we can kind of keep things separate. And if we ever have to take down this tank again, we can just pull out these bags, remove the sand. And that way we can easily reuse those ingredients as well, you know? Here we go, just a few bags. I've only placed them in the back. I will also have some plants in the front, but in the front I just want to keep the, the sand layer as thin as possible. So there's not going to be any aquasol in there. We're only going to be using easy plants, so that's fine. And I mean, this is just the second time that I'm using this method. But um, if I have to believe MD, then the roots of the plants should be able to penetrate through these mesh bags. So that should be fine. So let's uh, cover this with some nice gravel, or not so nice gravel actually. Yeah, so basically the only substrate layer that I want to see is the sand. And I got quite a fancy sand, this is Rio Sand Tigris. This stuff is quite expensive. I mean, this is two kilos here, it's 12 euros. So if I would want to cover the entire bottom area just with the sand, I would need a lot more. It's going to cost me a lot more as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a cheap gravel in the background mostly, also to cover the, the soil bags. And then we'll cover that with the sand. So basically we're going to have three layers of substrate. Yeah, so I found this 10 kilo bag with really cheap gravel. I found this in my local garden center for like 8 euros. So I'm going to use this to cover the soil bags. And then we'll cover this with the sand, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's see. This stuff looks pretty clean. Does it need to be washed? Yeah, it does say here, rinse with lukewarm water before use. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's really necessary. Let's do a little test. I've got a glass of water here. Let's put some gravel in there. Ah, that's fine. It's clean. It's good. Let's just pour it in. Okay, that's the substrate layer done for now. We're going to add in the sand later. First, let's move on with the hardscape. Now, the hardscape for this layout is actually sponsored by Wio. They sent me a bunch of different hardscape materials about six months ago, I think, including the stuff that I used in the previous layout. It's really nice hardscape materials. So thank you, Wio, for providing the hardscape for this layout again. And uh, let me show you guys what I got. So 
this stuff is called Neptune Driftwood. And it's really interesting. It's very light in color, also very light in weight. I can literally pick this up with one finger. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to look once it's saturated with water. So this is the main piece that I got. Got a few smaller pieces as well. Let's first move on to the rocks. So these are the rocks that I'm going to be using. And I think they're called Solar Eclipse, something like that. They have some really interesting names for their hard scan materials. What's interesting about them is that they're literally cut in half. So they have a very flat side. So we can put that directly on a glass or slightly on a substrate. This is the biggest one I have and then I have a few smaller ones as well. So I already played around a little bit with the hardscape before I started the video. So let's see if we can make the same layout again, basically. Yes, that's kind of how I had the rocks laid out before. So five of those solar eclipse boulders. Next up, I got a bunch of small uh, Neptune driftwood pieces. And I want to arrange them so it kind of looks like we have one big piece coming down into the tank. Yeah, so this is kind of what I had in mind. So it almost looks like every piece is part of that main big branch. It's not quite there yet, I need to play around with it a little bit more, but um, yeah, this is just my, uh, my idea so far. Yeah, I think this is going to be it. It took a little bit of time. I actually removed a few pieces as well, because I think in this aquarium it's going to be like less is more. So I think I'm quite happy with how it looks right now. It's, uh, it's simple, but... I think it's going to look really nice. We're going to have some green plants in the corners. Yeah, some green plants in between the, the rocks as well. I think it's going to look good. Next step is to glue the hardscape together because these pieces of wood are definitely going to float. Let me actually give you guys a view from the top as well. So the main piece is going along the side here and just leading on the glass. And then all these smaller branches are kind of just leaning against it. So we can definitely glue everything together. And of course, as always, we're going to glue everything together with cotton pads and super glue. I think by now everybody has seen this method already, so let's just get it over with. I love this gluing method, like it's so fast and easy, it just works every time. So I glued it here, for example, I glued it here, I glued it there, and now this whole structure is just completely stuck together like nothing is moving anymore nothing is going to float yeah super easy so i think right now we can actually finish the substrate so i'm going to add in the sand and then i have some decorative gravel as well i think adding in the sand is probably one of the most satisfying things about making a hardscape layout only if it's dry though i mean if it's wet it's not as satisfying but yeah so just a thin layer in front That looks so good already. It does look quite yellowish and reddish. That's I think because of the camera and also because of the, uh, the light. So the Skylight Hyperspot has two channels, like a cold white and a warm white. And I can play around with it a little bit. So I think we still need to add in some more sand, but I think first gonna add in the gravel. And for the gravel, I have this bag of Rio Gravel Elderly. This one wasn't sponsored by the way, I just bought it, but yeah, never used it before. It's just small round pebbles. Um, I think this definitely needs to be washed. I'm not sure though. I mean, we haven't washed anything, so why should we wash this? I think I'm just gonna do a big water change after we're completely done with everything. This is how it looks after it's washed, by the way. So just relatively dark colors, a few white ones, but uh, yeah, I think it will match nicely with everything. Nice, I'm really happy with that. I think it looks good. Looks natural as well, you know. It's quite interesting with the uh, yeah the yellow color that we kind of got going on. It's a bit uh, warmer than what I'm used to with most types of sand, but I think it can definitely work. I'm just curious how it looks uh, when everything is wet. So I think now is a good time to just fill up the cream with water. Uh, just do one big water change. So fill up 
drain it completely and after that we can start planting. So I was kind of expecting the aquarium to go very cloudy because we didn't wash the sand, we didn't wash the gravel, but it's actually not too bad. So I'm currently draining the tank again. In the meantime, we can talk about the plants. So the plants that are going in the substrate, I only have two types. And the first one is the Heterantara zosperifolia. It's a very easy plant. Uh, the other one is the Helanthium bolivianum quadrochistatus. Both of them very easy plants. And the reason I chose these two plants is because this aquarium is actually inspired by another aquarium. So I think it was April or May that I went to the uh, Interzoo convention in Germany and at the booth of Den Laplace there was an aquascape made by Stefan Hamel. He works for Den Laplace or I think he's retired now actually but he used to travel a lot to all these remote places and discover new plants. So that aquascape was inspired by one of his travels. It was a very minimal layout with only two types of plants, these two types. And I know I kind of started thinking about that layout again. I thought it would be a cool idea to kind of you know, recreate it in this aquarium. So I'm going to use the exact same plants and just see if it works. I mean, it's probably the least amount of plants I ever used in an aquascape. And if it doesn't work, we can always add, add in more plants, right? Okay, so the plants are prepared. So the first one, the uh, Heterantara, kind of looks a bit weird right now, but that's because it's an in vitro tissue culture cup. Uh, this plant is going to go in the background. So I'm thinking to plant it in the, in the right corner here, most of it. Then the middle section here, I'll leave open just so we can see kind of through and underneath the piece of wood. And I'll leave, and then I'll plant a little bit more in the left side over there, just a smaller portion. And then the other plant, plant the Halantium. This one will go in the midground, so in between all the rocks. And then we'll leave the foreground open because it's such a thin layer of sand. There's, it's impossible to plant anything there. But once this plant starts growing and starts sending out runners, it will kind of make its way to the foreground as well. Okay, we're almost filled up. I'm currently making the last bit of RO water. In this aquarium, I'm trying to go for like 50-50 tap and RO because that's what the fish were used to in the previous layout as well. And I want to make sure that the, the water levels, the water parameters are sort of matching. I've also hooked up the filter again and added the heater. So you can kind of see the heater from this angle. It's not really what I prefer, but I mean, we need it. And in like two weeks from now, the plants are going to completely cover that. So yeah, so far it's looking interesting. It's uh, very different from my usual style. I mean, I've used four in vitro pots in this layout and that's not like me at all but i think this is an aquarium where you kind of just have to have faith and trust the process and know that it's going to look good in a few weeks from now okay so the next thing i want to do is add a plant on top of this big piece of wood i mean in the, in the previous layout we had quite a lot of immersed growth which looked really good and i really enjoyed it so i want something here as well so when i was at my local garden center to pick up the gravel for this layout they had some really nice ferns so i found this one i think it's quite a generic fern but it looks really good so I want to find a way to be able to attach it on top of there. Okay, so let's see if we can remove this from the pot and clean up some of this, some of the roots. We don't really want any of this substrate in the aquarium because I'm sure there's quite a lot of nutrients in here. And that can definitely cause algae. So let's see if we can clean this up as much as possible. Okay, so I cleaned off most of the substrate. So we just have the roots left. I think we could just um, place this on top of the wood like, like so and have some of the roots in the, uh, basically in the water. I think that should work, but it might be too, too wet for this fern. I think ferns prefer it like not too wet. So I'm thinking to kind of make a little pouch with this uh, filter wool, kind of wrap the roots in the filter wool and that will kind of protect them as well. And that way we can kind of regulate the amount of water that's going into the roots, I guess. Honestly, I don't know if anything that I just said made any sense. Um, this is just very much an experiment, so I'm just going to give it a try. It's interesting. I'm not sure yet how I feel about this fern, but um, I think we just need to give it a little bit more time. I think it looks a little bit out of place right now because we don't have any green underwater yet. I mean, we do, but plants just need to grow a bit more. I think once we have more green underwater, there will be a better balance. We yeah, have also just added some more RO water. I think the next thing I want to do is I want to try to add some moss on top of this piece of wood. I have some special material for that. Yeah, so I recently got some of this Terra tape. Never used it before, but I've seen other people use it. It's quite interesting. It's basically like a sort of like a fabric that's very good at holding moisture. 
So I want to place some of this on top of this piece of wood, then place some moss on top of this data tape, and that should basically keep the moss nice and moist. That's just something I want to try out here. I have a leftover pot of this Amblystegium serpent. It's a moss that I recently used in a little Wabikusa. Looks pretty good, but I'm not sure if the low humidity here will make it grow as well. So again, another experiment. Let's give it a try as well. Okay, I think we're ready to start adding the fish back in. Normally I would like to wait a little bit longer first let the plants grow in, stuff like that. But in this case, I mean, the conditions in the pond are not really favorable, they're not great. So I'd rather get them out of there, get them into this fresh and clean tank. I think that's the best option here. Okay, so I just got a lot of the green neon tetras and some of the uh, dwarf pencil fish. I've got my beautiful pair of Pissurama Hongsloi. Some more green neon, some more quarries, some more pencil fish. This one's a little bit of this one's a little bit of everything. And here is the last of it. So we've got loads of pygmy quarries, more green neons, some shrimp, a few other sinkless. Here you go, guys. Two weeks have passed and it's slowly starting to look like how I imagined it. The plants have grown quite a bit already, but still need to get a lot more dense. The moss on top of the main branch seems to be doing good as well. Some of it looks dry, but I do see a lot of new growth. Even though it's a very simple layout, I'm really enjoying it. And I think that in a few more weeks from now, it's going to look really good. <laughs>